the two-way player. Pretty common in high school, but practically unheard of at the major league level. So unheard of, in fact, that when one does come along, he unanimously wins MVP and breaks 100-year-old records left and right. But I'm not impressed. So he can pitch and he can hit. Big deal. I want to know if he can pitch and catch. And more importantly, can his catcher pitch? That is the sign of a true two-way superstar. So I decided to test it out. I put Shohei behind the dish, stranded his catcher on the mound, and tried to win a game. These are the results. Just to get this set up correctly, took quite a bit of work. First, I had to go into the player editor and change Otani's secondary position to catcher. And this only works because MLB The Show has him labeled as a two-way player. I can't just do this with any pitcher. And for this same reason, I can't just put his catcher on the mound as a pitcher. To make that happen, I have to start an entire franchise and turn off the option for designated hitters. This allows me to put Shohei in the game as a catcher, and because there is no DH, the pitcher will be in the lineup. After the starting pitcher faces three batters, I can pinch hit with the normal starting catcher, Max Stassi, and then leave him in the game to pitch. So the plan is set, now let's do it. We got pretty lucky with our first opponent of the year. If we're trying to get a win, I can't think of a better chance than against the A's. If you're an A's fan, sorry. Not for what I just said, but I'm sorry you're an A's fan. And here we go, opening day. Today's fans are in for a treat. I also set both the pitching and hitting difficulties to All-Star. Anything lower than that, I could probably blow them out with a Little League team, so All-Star it is. Top of the first is completely normal baseball, aside from just two awful teams playing each other. Mike Trout comes up for the first time, and he comes through for me with a double off the wall. I'm basically putting all my hopes and dreams on the bats of him and Otani. Trout gets left on second though, and we move to the bottom of the first to get this circus started. Otani-san comes out in his catcher's gear and says to Syndergaard, look, I don't know what the f the manager's doing. He's got me playing catcher. He says, you're getting pulled after the first, so just throw it down the middle or something. I don't care. And then Syndergaard's just sitting there like, all right, well, this is f***ing stupid. Otani has absolutely no problems catching. Surprise, surprise. And we go three up, three down, and move into the second. Shohei comes up to bat, and I work into a 3-0 count. I don't care about baseball's unwritten rules, so I go full-blown Tatis Jr. with the count and let her rip. But it's just short. Bummer. But now our pitcher's up to bat, and it's time to get this party started. Stassi in to pinch hit. He grounds out, but he's in the game. The game gives me a little pop-up message. Subject, position player on the mound. Body, you have a position player on the mound. No suggestion, no recommendation, just a statement. So I guess I'll leave him in the game. My four seam has some serious heat on it. 79 blows by him like a missile. But he eats my next pitch alive and gets a double. This is going to be a long day. I thought the commentary was going to say something about having my catcher on the mound, but they never did, and they're incredibly annoying, so I turned them off. Next batter pops out, followed by a sack grounder to first, and then I make my next guy look like an absolute clown. Look at this. Dude almost falls over chasing a pitch that had about half an inch of movement. But joke's on me, he hits a single up the middle, and they score their first run. Next, I get a manager tip. Pitcher getting tired. I've thrown 11 pitches. Also, he's not tired. They're just trying to get him out of here without just saying that he sucks, but no, he's staying in until his arm falls off. They get another single, and then a miracle. The hit blows by the third baseman, runners gunning for home, but we get a perfect throw, and Showtime Shohei makes the inning-saving tag. Get that man the MVP right now. He looks like an absolute natural behind the plate. Next inning, our bats were cooking. We get a nice little single with Upton, we draw a walk with Ward, and then Duffy gets an RBI double. It should have been caught, honestly. Dude just goes full alligator arms for some reason and misses it, but a run's a run. And Trout steps up with two on. I needed him to deliver, and deliver he did. 420 feet, right into the stands. After that shot, the game says the Angels have a win expectancy of 83%, but for some reason, I feel like that number's a little high. Bottom of the third. Hit, hit, hit with an RBI. Broken bat that almost murders our pitcher or catcher or whatever you want to call him. Then, a ridiculous throw by Rendon. StatCast says he throws this ball 76 miles an hour while running backwards and doing parkour, but our catcher pitcher only has an 80 mile an hour fastball? Make it make sense. My recording software started wigging out, but they got another single and an RBI, and all of a sudden our win expectancy is down to 58%. It's like they missed something huge in their initial calculations. Maybe that we have a catcher on the mound. But our bats stay hot in the fourth. Four straight hits, getting an RBI, and loading the bases. They pull their pitcher. We have an actual catcher on the mound, and they are pulling their pitcher in the fourth. This is why I apologize to the Ace fans out there. Sack fly, runner scores. Trout comes back up with a chance to really put this out of hand, but he can't get the hit to fall, and there's the third out of the inning. In the fourth, my guy couldn't find the strike zone with a freaking map, 
These pitches are avoiding the zone like MLB commentators avoided talking about Barry Bonds during Judge's 62 home run season. So, since my pitch locations were basically just suggestions at this point, I had to start throwing meatballs down the middle. They get a single, and then go for the sack bunt. I don't really want to talk about what happens here, but that sack bunt turns into a single. The catcher pitcher is officially completely out of energy and confidence. Next guy rips a single, and they score a run. Very next pitch, it's a three-run go-ahead home run. Finally, the game's going how I expected it to go. They got two more hits, but finally pop out, and we make it out of the inning. Shohei comes to bat, and does Shohei things. Of course he gets a home run. I was kind of hoping that I'd get completely blown out in this game, so I'd only have to narrate like three innings and then call the mercy rule, but no, it's somehow a nail-biter. We're tied 7-7 in the fifth. Trout saves another single with a spectacular catch, just a ridiculous grab. Stassi's pumped about it. He's realizing he might actually get a win on the mound. Whoa! There we go! And we actually get two more outs without allowing any runs. Amazing. Neither team did jack shit in the sixth, but Shohei did do this. He's now hit a homer and put out a stealing runner in his first game at catcher, so I think it's safe to say he's a pretty decent two-way player. Stassi, on the other hand, to be determined. We couldn't generate any offense in the seventh, and then, after 62 pitches, Stassi's elbow exploded. We ran him too deep into the game, and he got injured. Our experiment had come to an end without a definitive result. Seven innings, seven runs apiece. So I just simmed to the end of the game, and in true Angels fashion, we lost. The reliever gave up three runs in the eighth. Jesus. So, I guess moving forward, pitchers should probably keep pitching. Catchers should keep catching. And Shohei, well, Shohei can apparently do whatever the hell he wants. If you want to see something even more frustrating than a catcher pitching, then watch this video where I tried to win MVP with a zero overall player. Thanks for watching.